Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Andy Makes a Friend, where we build um, a homebrew, uh, one of my homebrew settings. We work on one of my homebrew settings. Um, <clears throat> hope everyone's having a nice day. I had off from work today because of President's Day, which was nice, and it was actually pretty decent weather out, which was also nice. And I saw Birds of Prey, and that was certainly a movie that starred people who share similar names to the Birds of Prey. Um, I hope everyone had a nice holiday, and yeah, um, uh, we'll get started in a second. Um, looks like a couple people are in chat, CC, I don't know if, uh, anyone else is but um uh i'd like i always like to check in with them to see what they want to see me work on so m the options are uh we can keep working on the shattered kingdoms which is what we worked on last time uh it's a world where uh civilization ended about a thousand years ago ended uh when a uh the golden city of the gods crashed into the continent uh, the continents shattering all of them and creating forever storms around little packs of islands. Uh, so there's that one. We worked on that. We worked on the starting area. The starting area for there, I can expand outward uh, a little bit, kind of maybe get a little bit more into that. Um, we've got Boot Underhill, uh, which is a setting that is uh, the moon has been industrialized so it's roughly steampunky uh they've just discovered spelljammer ships which is good because they've run out of resources on their moon so they've taken to uh launching spelljammer ships to explore the other planets in their sphere and the planet that the moon orbits is rich in resources but also danger so there's some it's kind of a wild westy um hence boot underhill it's like Boot Hill, and then like Underhill is a hobbit. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, so that's kind of wild, westy, exploration-y, steampunky, sort of, kind of that. Um, <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, oh, you had your sound muted. Oh, thank you very much. I did get a haircut. Um, I went to a real person haircuttery place instead of Great Clips. I've never gotten a bad haircut from Great, Clip, great Clips. I've also never gotten a great haircut. And this is a great haircut. Uh, Krista was very happy and impressed with it. They did my beard. It was great. Real people, adult haircut places. Who knew? Everyone else, apparently. I just go... It was worth the extra... It wasn't even that much more expensive, is the thing. It was like $10 more. Worth it. Um, now I have to go get my haircut like semi regularly, like a normal person. Gross. Um. So in case you missed, <laughs> sorry, Stacey. Like I said, I've never gotten a bad haircut from Great Clips, and their sales—you can't beat them. It's just they give me the same haircut every time, and I feel like this is a I feel better taken care of. Um. And if you have a person at Great Clips. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. My wife goes to, or went to, the hair cuttery, but then the person she visited at the hair cuttery opened her own salon. You can find, I just never went to the same person, so nobody ever figured out what my hair was like, so I just got kind of generic man's haircut, too. Um, um, they do, it. They yes, they do a $14 haircut, and it's, you're getting a $14 haircut. It is perfectly fine. Um, I've had good haircuts from there. I've never had a bad haircut. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, what do we, what do we, what do you want me to work on, CC? Uh, Shattered Kingdoms, Boot Underhill. Let me know if you need me to explain any of these again. Uh, Bide, which is um, the Star Chasers were there once. It's sort of my most generic fantasy setting. Uh, I would work on the. Um, I'm being washed out by these lights. Can I do anything about that? Oh, you know what? It's probably the screen. That's locked. Why? Why are the controls on it locked? Whatever. Um, 
it's probably all the screens I have over here that are sort of washing out my face from this side. Um, uh, Bind is my most sort of g generic fantasy setting. Uh, I don't mean that in a bad way uh, or pejoratively. The Forgotten Realms is a, in my opinion, generic fantasy setting, and it's great. I love it. Um, Nentir Vale, Greyhawk, Lord of the Rings. They're the sort of classic. Classic's probably a better word for it than generic. Um, so if I worked on that, I would go over it a little bit, but then I would probably start working on the the starting settlements as I've started to think of them. And then the last one I could work on is Suburbia, which is sort of Neverwhere, Studio Ghibli, Brazil, Bioshock, Shin Megami Tensei flavored, and I would explain a little bit more about that. I think it makes a little bit more sense than sort of just buzzwords, vision board, but vision boards are important. Uh, I think I think Ashley Warren talks about those a lot when she runs her RPG workshop classes. And yeah, having having touchstones that you can point to is very helpful. <laughs> so, okay. I don't know. <laughs> Daniel is here, and he is immobilized and here to bother me. Well, I welcome your bothersomeness, and I hope you are feeling better, Daniel. Um, uh, soup votes for suburbia. Uh, Daniel, do you have a vote, or would you just like to bother me? I'm good either way. Um, while I wait, I'll do my sarcastic pine ball. Which one of these should I work? Should I work on suburbia? Yes, if you leave me alone. Okay. <laughs> That's okay, Daniel. You did just get here, and you missed all of my explanation. So I'm just going to work on suburbia. So, Suburbia, which is also the name of a movie, I think. So I've been thinking of a different name for it, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> which means it's clearly a great name. Um, although it's two separate words, I feel like that helps me. Anyway, so Suburbia. I made a little logo, because I love Adobe Spark. And I refuse to pay for it because Adobe. Um, it's also a ten dollars a month to remove a watermark. If I really wanted to, and I've done this before, if I really wanted to, I would adjust the size settings on this and then just crop it. Adds too many extra steps for an, a document I look at. Um. Uh. I'm going to write down Lord of Sprawl and Inefficient Land Use because that fits perfectly, Daniel. Uh, here we go. He's going right into the gods. Lord of Sprawl and Inefficient Land Use. Okay. So, Suburbia. I'll read the little blurb like I did for the Shattered Kingdoms. Uh, Suburbia is a world just like ours, except it's totally different. Magic is real. Monsters are real. But people are still people. They cheat, they lie, they love, they celebrate. They spend too much time on their phones, they stay out too late, they get FOMO, they rage, they fight dragons. You know, normal stuff. Hitting microphones. Um, you might have lived down here your whole life. Or at least most of it. If you woke up as an elf a few hundred years ago, you might be new here. That's okay. You'll catch the drift soon enough, pal. Just find someone who knows what they're doing and keep your head down. So, uh, uh, Undercity might have been what I was thinking of, Soup. Just Undercity? I don't like it as much as Suburbia. Also, if I only ever do this if I don't ever publish it I don't think it would be a problem um and I do think it's enough differentiated that it would I get in my head sometimes about these things um uh 
so essentially, suburbia is like if you've ever read or seen or listened to the eighty the multimedia blitz that was Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. Essentially, in Neverwhere, a guy helps uh, this woman who turns out to be from London below, and she introduces him to this world of essentially a Dungeons and Dragons game, a pseudo Victorian society that's all grimy and magicy, and there are monsters below ground, and there's magic. She can open doors, and she that if she she can use that power very figuratively like anything can become a door her name is a door um and it's about opening keys and there's an angel and the angel failed to protect atlantis um and i've 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 read the book and i've listened to the radio play and i've never seen the tv show but from the tv show was like shot weird or something i don't know the book's really good the radio play has a lot of good people in it, but it is worse than the book I remember being. There's a lot of stuff they kind of skip over. Cast is crazy, though. It's like James McAvoy, Christopher Lee, Benedict Cumberbatch, Natalie Dormer. The guy from... He's Martian Manhunter and Supergirl. <laughs> that guy. Um, yeah, so... Oh, there's definitely a fantasy subway, Daniel. Oh, it was Undercity from WoW. Oh, boom. Um, it's where the undead people live. Well, real original Blizzard. Vibe. Anyway. So, Suburbia is sort of like that. So, it's... But, but that was kind of weirdly medieval and Victorian at the same... Like, they were... And I want it to be much more modern. It's, there are cell phones underground. There's the subway. That's how you get around for the most part. Um, or teleport. And, you know, the mayor is, but the mayor just happens to be a Modron. Um, so the idea is, you either have lived down here your whole life, or most of it, as I said. Um, you were born a tiefling underground. And you don't really know what the surface world is. You know it's there. And underground sort of roughly, like just for convenience sake, roughly follows the same historical path, trajectory. There are less wars and stuff like that. More skirmishes just because of the nature of living underground. You can't really have like World War II. But it's sort of a dark reflection of our world. I'm not going to worry too much about that. This is very much a... Don't... Yeah. Last 50 years are what's important. Um, so, yeah, I, I have also not played WoW in a long time. I think Cataclysm was new the last time I played WoW. <clears throat> I think it was two laptops ago the last time I played WoW. Um, Crystal really liked WoW. It was one of the video games she really liked. Um... She never played for a terribly long time, but she liked running around and jumping, and she was a dark elf. Um, anyway. I'm so terrible at explaining things. Uh, I'm all over the place. So, you can be born there. Or, one day, you simply wake up in the body of a fantasy race. Underground... And you don't know why. You don't know if you died. You don't know if you're being punished, rewarded. Um, but one day you might wake up below ground and you have semi-magical powers. You might still be a human. You might be something related to your previous line life above. If you were a kind of back alley brawler, some kind of muscle for our, uh, the mafia or whatever, you might wake up as a fighter or a barbarian. If you were a thief, pickpocket, in your life above, you might wake up as a rogue, a singer, a bard. Um, or it could be aspirational kind of thing. Um, 
or metaphorical if you fought a lot with personal demons of whatever nature. You might wake up being able to shoot fire from your hands and you've apparently sold your soul to some kind of devil. It's very much... What story do you want to tell? Get weird with it? I'm I'm a big fan of, of kind of... Not just but make it weird, though. I don't know. Just get weirder. Like, I want my... Kind of... That's... It's it's my weirdest complaint about a lot of movies recently, but it's like, it's essentially, yeah, but it could have been weirder. The new Star Wars movie could have been a lot weirder. Just make it weird. Whatever. <laughs> um, not that there's anything wrong with safe. Not safe. Not weird. I still like not weird things. I don't know. I want this to be different than classic fantasy. Because you tell classic fantasy stories in a classic fantasy setting. I love it. We're playing a hell of a game, literally, in Task Force Unlikely right now in a classic fantasy setting. Spelljammer is a little weirder by design, uh, just because there's giant space hamsters and hippo men who love guns. But, yeah, I just like also, I just like keeping things weird. Anyway, um... Get weird with it is a good motto. Exactly, Daniel. Um, let's see. So. Um, suburbia is a modern cosmopolitan setting. It is cosmopolitan in the same way New York is cosmopolitan. New York City. It, so that take from that what you will. There are parts of New York that are cosmopolitan. And uh, Hell's Kitchen, for instance, weirdly, is, or Chelsea, is um, like the arts district kind of thing. Or, you know, Manhattan is very cosmopolitan, that kind of stuff. And then or Brooklyn, you might consider cosmopolitan. And then there's parts of New York that are just, just garbage. I'm not a fan of New York. I don't like cities. Um, I don't like big cities. Let me rephrase that. Um, too many people. Um, the above world is the normal world as we see it. The below world is suburbia, a modern magic setting. Uh, I don't know if I want to use the terms above and below because that's that's never where. It's London above and London below. I don't want to... While this is inspired by... I, I don't want it to be the same because it's not. Um... Which is why I have all those other touchstones in there as well. So I, I do want to find different words for that. Under. Um, eh, yeah, there are. Sorry, I, I am a curmudgeon who doesn't like cities. I don't want people touching me. I don't really want to be that close to that many people. Um, but now, yeah, being able to walk public transport. I live out in the suburbs. Granted, I drive very a very short distance to work. And if I could walk, I would, but I'd have to cross three major streets. Um, and I don't want to get hit by a car. Um, so above and below, um, technology is roughly, roughly commensurate, words I can say, roughly commensurate with modern technology, though above world technology doesn't work in suburbia and vice versa. Instead, you need Arcana computer products or Hexlite, some other item meant to work with the odd magic fields underground. So that's sort of, I'm kind of playing like with the idea that the Underdark, for instance, has like magical radiation that makes things weird and mutates them. That's why a lot of stuff from the Underdark is bizarre is because of that radi radiation. Your cell phone doesn't work underground, one, because literally it can't connect to a cell tower. Just like in real life, you know, your phone often stops working on the subway unless it's one of those weird subway stations sponsored by your phone provider. Philadelphia has those. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so you just have to replace your stuff with stuff that works in suburbia. So the most popular intelligent phone is the Scry phone because I'm a trash person who needed a pun. Also, intelligent instead of smart because you use intelligence in D&D. I'm a terrible person, and I should be arrested for my crimes. Um, guns are unreliable below ground. 
unless you have taken a class suitable to magically maintaining them. Artificers, gunslingers, etc. So, uh, the idea being, I, I want... I want it to still make sense that the barbarian can use the giant fuck all hammer or axe or whatever. That being said, if someone wants to play an artificer or some kind of gunsmith, because I know I want it's a modern setting, I want to be able to have an Uzi. Yeah, feel free or talk to me and we'll talk about it. If you want to be a ranger who uses a sniper rifle, yes. I would allow that. I just want there to be an in-universe reason that not everyone has a gun. Uh, <laughs> I'll put the cats in charge. It'll be fine. For They're much more entertaining than me anyway. Although they just sleep all day. Um, uh, Daniel mentioned this earlier. A subway. Uh... Since cars can't really fit in the cramped areas below ground, most people either use sub-subways or magic to travel significant distances. So it might be the case that perhaps sub-subways were built in old purple worm tunnels, and maybe one of them isn't as unoccupied as people wanted to think. They were just sleeping or something, or in the lair of a Tarrasque. <laughs> that would be terrible. Um, okay. Um... All races are playable and welcome in the below world. Uh, they've grown together to form an interconnected and an interdependent society, but since they are still magical creatures held together by belief, they maintain certain classic attributes about them. I'm saying you don't have to play a stereotypical dwarf. You don't have... To, not that you have to do that in regular Dungeons & Dragons too, but you're still... Dwarven society is still... Sort of stereotypical. Take from that what you will. I just... I'm, I'm not using any alternate race rules. I wouldn't be opposed, but... Um, I know some people want to get rid of... Uh, attribute mumps attached to race. Which I understand. But I think if you do that, you have to place them at a different point. If that makes sense. you, I, In my opinion, if you want to... Here's Andy's talking about 5e design. If, In my opinion, if you want to take attribute bonuses away, bonuses away from race, which I understand why you want to do that, I think you have to insert them at a different point in character creation. Uh, I know some people have said that you should just have it tied to class I don't like that because then I feel like you just everyone builds the same build of a class one of the things I like about 5e is you can build quote unquote suboptimal characters by making a dwarf ranger or whatever and it doesn't really end up being that much worse in the long run whereas in 4e you would be trash because they kind of broke the math in 4e. I like in 5e that you can do that. And I think if you did tied all attributes to the class, then you end up with very similar builds always. And I like that. And then you can't have kind of weird builds like dex paladins and kind of strong monks or whatever. You just... Or Dexy barbarians or whatever. You just end up with a weird build that way. So I think you either have a separate part of character creation where there's just an attribute increase section. You get three points. You can spend at most two on any one stat. And then you use the other one to build something. So if you wanted to build a Dex Paladin, you could say, oh, I want plus two dex, plus one charisma, or plus one dex, plus one con, plus one charisma. Or you tie them to background. That's just my opinion. All that to say is I'm not using any of those alternate rules. I'm using the rules as written. Um, yeah, sorry, Daniel. It, that's right. You, it is in your contract. I, I made sure to do that because you do play a good stereotypical dwarf. Um... 
And Lawful Good. You play Lawful Good very well. Um, that can be hard. Uh, lawful Stupid is something is something people know about for a reason. It's It can be difficult to play Lawful Good. Um, okay. Uh, all classes are available, including modern classes from this Unearthed Arcana. That sadly went nowhere. I thought it was pretty rad. Um, touch of Class is... Uh, the one of the EN world EN five der I've never understood. I think it's in. I think it's supposed to be N cider, but it's spelled E N five I D E R. Um, I backed this forever ago. When, when is this even from? I feel like it's from early five E. It has no date in it. Uh, I backed this on Kickstarter a long time ago. Uh, but in here, there's an alchemist, a card caster, so you can be Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, a Diabolist, a Feywalker, a Morphing character, the Noble, which I thought was a pretty rad class, the Occultist, which essentially lets you be a monster, like a, a kind of a like a universal movie monster. Uh, and they released a couple of these. I only have the first one, but I could pick up the other ones. I would let my players play as one of these. Alternatively, Mage Hand Press has a bunch of really cool classes. Um, they published the Dark Matter book. And then there's like um, there's a bunch of classes on their website that you can get for free the base classes of, which I like. And then you can buy upgraded like uh, like a bunch, a bunch of subclasses for them. So like you can go there and you can get the very basic witch. It's like the um, 5e's OGL. Um, so but some of their classes work very well with modern aesthetics. They have the gunslinger I've mentioned here. I like, I'm pretty sure I like their version of the gunslinger. Their witches are pretty interesting. Uh, and if my players were interested in that, I would work with them to purchase the appropriate products, make sure we think it's okay, make sure we're not looking at like some old version that it hasn't been errated or abandoned or something. Uh... Yes, and sorry, Daniel in chat is talking about his philosophy on playing good and yes. I, I definitely agree that good doesn't always equal nice and evil doesn't always equal mean. That is that is important to internalize. I think especially for people who want to play evil characters, evil de evil doesn't mean playing like Knights of the Old Republic or Mass Effect is a renegade. Like, now you're shooting people now. What are you doing? You're supposed to be a hero, even if you are an evil one. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, modern magic from Art of the Turkana. Let's open this real fast. I always thought this was pretty neat, and it never really went anywhere. Uh, and it's from 2015. Uh, so there's City Magic, the City Domain, which is cool. Um, I, I like Civilization Domain, clerics and stuff like that. Like 5e doesn't really... I think 5e in Ravnica has an Order Cleric, which is kind of close. But I always thought Arathis was a really cool goddess from 4e. Um, uh, so yeah, they a city cleric a the ghost in the machine warlock and then there's like an arcano at the technomancer um online casting oh man you can be um land from Mega Man battle network uh and yeah and then there's a couple neat spells neat new spells that um interact with technology very well find vehicle it's find steed but a car 
Yeah. Um, okay. I always thought it was neat, and I wish they would have um, done something with it. I get why they didn't. It doesn't really fit with anything else they're doing. Uh, and they haven't done a modern setting book yet, like they did in 3. I, never, I, I never played 3, so I never read that book, so I don't know, I don't even know if it's useful anymore, but I would like them to do a modern fantasy setting. I want it to be modern fantasy, though. I still want it, I don't want all humans, I want Shadowrun, sort of. I just don't really like the mechanics of Shadowrun. Um... Sorry, reading chat. Um, evil as selfish and good as selfless is a good way to to interpret it. Although I think I think on certain ends of the spectrum that that doesn't hold as true. Like I think you could play a lawful evil character who is selfless in a way. Darth Vader is law is stereotypically lawful evil, and his whole reason for falling to the dark side is to save Padme, granted, it's selfish, ultimately, but it has the the veneer of selflessness. And I think, conversely, Han Solo is often a chaotic good character, and he has selfish tendencies. In the end, he ultimately is selfless. But not on the surface. So I think I think you can kind of nuance at those if you know what I mean. But ultimately, good, selfless, evil, selfish is very good shorthand. Uh, let's see. Daniel said, I like 5e's classes because you can fit a lot of character archetypes in different classes. I agree. I really like how... I like 5e in general a lot, but I like how kind of basic their class structure is, so much so that you can have a scout in the rogue, which is a outdoorsy rogue and still also have an assassin and you know a mastermind and they're very just they're very different but they're all built in the same chassis which I like uh yeah Daniel says he also likes fine vehicle for paladins who want a cool motorcycle and soup says if you're trying to play final fantasy 15 or something um, yeah. Okay. So this is just a lot of me explaining my setting, and that's fine. <laughs> um, so at the very beginning, when you create your character, I've added an extra step in character creation. It's after you select everything, or before, somewhere in character creation, you decide if you are someone who woke up in suburbia, a member of the discarded, or, or if you are the unremembered people who have lived in suburbia their whole lives, or most of them. So if you play an elf who's lived in suburbia for 500 years, technically you are discarded, but if, the way you're playing them, you're an unremembered. Um, and they give you one little perk. Um, which is for the discarded... It's once per session you can declare, I'm new here, to help you get out of a sticky situation. You make a charisma check with advantage, and you can't roll a one on it. And then conversely, the unremembered once per session can declare, I know that. To recall lore of suburbia, you, when you make an intelligence or wisdom check, you can do it with advantage, and you also re-roll ones. Okay. Uh, the discarded. One day you wake up in suburbia, your old life seemingly forfeit. You can work toward getting it back or embrace your new life. When you wake up, it's possible you are no longer human, and then you have gained a class. The class might be related to what you did or who you were in your old life. A doctor might be a cleric, a drunk brawler a barbarian, a firefighter might be a paladin, and so on. 
Or it might be some sort of wish fulfillment, wish fulfillment emulating your MMORPG PC or your Dungeons & Dragons character. Or it might be totally random. Um, and then I have a little quote I made up here. I prefer to just think of us as temporarily cosmic, cosmically adrift. Carly Washington, temporarily a centaur. Um, and then the unremembered. Like the discarded, your class might be related to your career in suburbia. So if you are a firefighter in suburbia, you might be a paladin. Uh, or perhaps you just adventure a little on the side and spend most of your time working in a shop or factory. You might have a day job and adventuring is your side hustle. Um, uh, and then here's my little quote. It's not so bad. You never know what you're missing up there, and the way some of the discarded talk about it, up there don't sound so great, honestly. Scotland Buttercup, Halfling Enforcer. Uh, suburbia is a fluid and open setting. It has no true set timeline. Or rather, it mostly follows a similar path of our history and is darkly reflected below ground. Suburbia is the name of both the city and the immense and diverse area surrounding it. Think New York, New York City. They're both named New York. It, the city and then the state. Uh, the city is large and sprawling, but it is not all-encompassing of the area of suburbia. Um, some important locations in the Forgotten City of Suburbia. The Forgotten City of Suburbia. A giant, sprawling, beautiful, disgusting, cramped, amazing, interconnected megacity connected by subway tunnels, sewers, mines, and all kinds of other things. Colloquially known as the Old City, the Lost City, Suburbia, the city that won't let you sleep, lots of things. Uh, the center. This is where government and major businesses lie. Uh, mayor Clockleton is an efficient, if dull mayor. He is a modron, and uh, he follows the letter of the law without much room for straying. Various other government agencies are run here, notably several powerful, uh, notably by several powerful dragons. Pardon me. Uh, it is built on top of the ruins of something unknowably ancient, because things that are unknowably ancient are always cool. Um, and these ruins are mostly off limits; they are restricted. Uh, the Temp Ward. Uh, nothing Temp about them. These were the original housing expansions built thousands of years ago by dwarves for the first discarded around the center. So they were built as temporary housing structures. Well, you guys will all go home soon. And then they didn't go home and they kept coming. And so it's the temp ward, but it's still, it's now permanent. Um, the stocks. Originally a town square where livestock gathered. Don't want to know what kind of livestock it was. Um gross underground things. Terrible bugs and purple worms. Uh, it's now the central commerce area of the city. You, if you need business done, you head to the stocks. Uh, the slow flow, which is the river that runs through the center of the city, it is aptly named and flows slowly and is full of garbage and sewage. If you've ever read the Discworld books, it's the river in Ankh-Morpork where it's, you can essentially walk across it. Uh, Slow Flow, no W, is the dragon turtle who guards the river. And she is also aptly named as she's a dragon turtle. Keyword turtle. She's slow. But slow and steady wins the race and she'll still breathe, breathe steaming hot garbage on you. Uh, down River is a middle class neighborhood near the river. Up River is an upscale neighborhood away from the river. Uh, so you don't have to deal with the smell. Industry Row is on the outskirts of the city. This is where the manufacturing for the city takes place. The city is massive, therefore outskirts might simply mean away from a densely populated area, but not always literally the edge of town. It's just on the outskirts of civilization, but you know, if you keep going through the outskirts, you might hit another populated neighborhood kind of thing. Uh, the Village Green is uh, neither terribly green and certainly not in a village. 
this is a park and agricultural area in the city. Time Square. I don't quite know what Time Square is yet, but it's not Times Square. I think it's going to be a bunch of clocks and there's some kind of temporal distortion and you're not really supposed to go there. I think that's what it's going to be. Kind of maybe a little on the nose, but um, I like it. And you can do weird time travel shenanigans. Um, and maybe like ghosts sort of appear. Um, uh, the ocean ceiling. Ocean ceiling. Some miles outside the city, past the gates, lies the underside of the ocean. On the craggy ceiling, you see shipwrecks jutting out at terrifying angles, and everything shimmers in an eerie blue-green glow. The air is salty, and many fish-like creatures fly above the travelers. So it's essentially, yeah, it's essentially, imagine the ocean floor is above you, and then there's no salt water under that, but the air is kind of murky and salty still. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's sort of also playing into like a, a hollow earth kind of feel. And this area is very, there are monsters and you don't really want to go out there, but there's also a bunch of shipwrecks above you that if you can get to them, they're full of stuff. Um. Oh, thank you, Daniel. Thank you and thank you. Um... The Swamp Yards. Outside the city is a swamp built up on overrun sewage and refuse. So it's it's essentially a man-made swamp, and therefore gross. Uh, the Hydro Fields, an electrical field that provides power for much of the city. It's magically generated. Uh, sewage trams, large boats made of trash that skim along sewer tunnels. Uh, affordable and more locally focused than sub subways often run by rat people or oozes uh, i think anyone who has watched these streams before will know that i love oozes um and i thought this would be also be a good setting to introduce some kind of rodent kin i don't have i'm sure there's something on the dm's guild for them um but yeah i, I imagine the sub subway is sort of yeah a little more like widespread and sewage trams are, yeah, like trams or buses, essentially. And they only work in certain areas of the city. But, you know. Yeah, Uzi can come back. Yay! Okay. Um, Sub Subway, as I mentioned. Uh, the Shirk Hill, which is a heavily traveled footpath along the Slow Flow River often overrun by bandits or con artists. Vendors in wagons set up shops to avoid the heavy rent and taxes of the city. This is a pun based on a river and road in the Philadelphia area called the Schuylkill, which some people call the shore kill because it's it's not fun to drive on. Uh, everyone drives really fast. It's One side's like a cliff, essentially. The other side's the river, which... If, yeah, I mean, obviously, in land, it's just kind of very windy. And um, my mother, for instance, refuses to go on the Schuylkill. Well, we'll go anyway, but the Schuylkill. Okay, mom, this is the quickest way to go. So it's the Shirkill. Um, also, try and spell Schuylkill. You'll probably spell it wrong. I don't even think that's how it's properly pronounced. Like in, I, I I assume it is a Native American word, but I could be wrong about that. I it has to be. Um, I'm gonna Google that. Skiakiel. Name. Yeah. Um. 
It's Dutch. Hmm. I didn't know that. Um, uh, anyway, the gods of suburbia. Uh, people worship all sorts of weird shit in the city. It can range from some sort of outdated piece of technology, a forgotten ideal or art form, a long-dead pantheon, an elder horror, a discontinued product or marketing mascot. Your patron might be the city itself or a lost cat if you truly believe. So some examples. Uh, I gave priests weird names to the Edison of mimeography, uh, the gastromancer of the ventriloquist, the High Priestess of Hectate, Hecate, the Cat Viscount of Bortles Blake, um, Ooze Lord of Goop Goop, the Flavor Master of Pepsi Kona, the Ambassador of Joe Camel, the Lord of Sprawl, an inefficient land use, the Landlord of Sprawl, an inefficient land use. Uh... <laughs> Glad you like Ooze Lord of Goop Goop Soup. Um, not starring. Tarting. Okay. So as I mentioned, my touchstones for this are Neverwhere, but also Neil Gaiman in general. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei, that sort of mix of grimy modern aesthetics and also weirdo demons. What's this snowman and this devil bird? I don't have, like, a, a deep knowledge of the Shin Megami Tensei series. I've played, I think, two of the games. I think Shin Megami Tensei 4. Well, one of the ones on the DS. and Or the 3DS. And then... One... Oh, and then there was one... I can't remember if it was on the Game Boy or the DS. It's good, though. You were teenagers... I think your teenagers and all of them. The one I played on the 3DS was weird. You were like, you were from like a a village and you worshipped angels or something like that. And you go to the devil city and it's like a city. But you're like from the, the first half of the, or the first hour of the game takes place in like rural Japan, essentially. In like clearly like the 1500s. And then all of a sudden you're in a city and you're like, what the hell is this? You have machine guns. They're weird. Cool though. Uh, the mayor of Flavortown. Exactly, Daniel. The mayor of Flavortown. You're getting this. Um, never worship my comment. Narnia, just for that. You wake up in a place that doesn't make any sense to you, and you didn't think satyrs were real, and I'm pretty sure that one's James McAvoy. Famous actor James McAvoy. Is that satyr? Uh, and then Brazil for sort of that murky, that, that similar aesthetic to uh, Shin Megami Tensei. Probably Terry Gilliam movies in general of just, why is everything a pneumatic tube, Terry? Who's this the height of civilization and technology to you? The pneumatic tube? Um, but also sort of that is any of this real vibe yeah um okay I've been talking for like an hour so there we go that's the basics took me an hour um so I would want to talk it, the so with suburbia the sort of the intent is to have it be and my my intent as always is to have them be very player focused stories where we're telling the story the players want to tell or their backgrounds or incorporating their backgrounds rather um so if i had four let's just say four players because that's kind of a good round number it's the number in my home game it's the number on task force unlikely um it, yeah uh it's the number on phantom horizons anyway uh three to four that's what we use on streams um 
I would want them all to create characters, and I think you could do it in a couple different ways. You could create any combination of the discarded and the unremembered. So if you wanted to create three, dis three to four all discarded PCs, that would be interesting. You're exploring this together. It would be good because then I, as the dungeon master, can kind of build the world in front of you and you're you're learning it all because it's all new to you. So in... You're all point of view characters in a movie or a TV show. So like on Star Trek, The Next Generation, this is always a good example. Uh, Wesley Crusher is there so that people have to explain things to him because he doesn't know as much about space travel as the adults do or even in like um kingdom hearts sora doesn't know how all this stuff works but donald and goofy sort of do um so you you explore the world together and it, that's also a good way to incorporate players ideas it's what do you want to see but you don't have any preconceived notions of what this setting is um so you could do it that way you could have them be all have lived here forever and then you sort of but i think to do that you sort of have to have like almost an extended session zero where you have each player contribute stuff to the world and really expand the world from the beginning which i think could be really cool if you had a certain kind of player mentality about it if you uh, uh, not player mentality if you had a certain kind of player if you had a player who likes world building not all players do that's perfectly fine you don't want to push that on them if they don't like it um but if you had a mix of the two you could do well, i don't really want a world build i kind of want to just explore the world you are presenting to me i want you to do i don't want to say the work or the heavy lifting but i want i want to i want it to feel new and real to me i want to feel that sense of wonder and awe of exploring that you get in something that's brand new to you Um, but if you also have a player who's just like, I want a world build, let's do it. So I think you have to, you have to figure out where you want your balances to lie, what your players want. Uh, I think any combination of the players that way would be interesting. You're just playing very different games. And I think having even just one player who's like, I want to help define even part of the city. I want to be, have lived here a long time. Then... You have you do have to you have to work it so that neither group becomes the center of attention. You don't want the the either it to be all about discovery and all this jazz or all about well you know you know this but Gary does and let's okay Gary you know this this and this everyone else cover your ears <laughs> you know you don't want that so. You have to sort of build where you want. But I think what I should do right now is sort of take the information here. Let me let me fill out Times Square real fast. Be bolded. Um, temporal. A distorted full of time ghosts. I don't know if you ever saw, there's an episode of Doctor Who where, um, spoilers, the Cybermen are like slightly out of sync with the reality that they're, that the, 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 the story takes place on. So they look like ghosts and they don't ever say anything. They can't really interact, but people project personalities onto them and are like well this is my father like see he reacted to that to his old cigar or his pipe or whatever it has to be him and they sort of just project these personalities even though they just kind of wander aimlessly and there's no personality they don't look like any they just kind of look like vague silhouettes and then eventually the cybermen are like Ex they don't yell exterminate um whatever the cybermen yell um i can't remember it's been a long time since i watched doctor who um the Cybermen warp into the reality and everyone's like, oh no, they weren't our loved ones. They were terrible, destroying robots. Time ghosts. Just something similar. 
get out of here. Discord notification. Okay. Okay. So. I think fleshing out, so let's see. Starting areas. Where are you? It was a sad episode of Doctor Who. That was with... I think Billy Lord was still the... Not Billy Lord. Is that her name? Rose. What's her name? Is that Billy Lord? Or is Billy Lord... Carrie Fisher's kid? Doctor Who... Rose. Billy Piper. Billy Lord is Princess Leia's kid. Carrie Fisher. Um, I remember Rose's mom being in that episode. Maybe Rose wasn't. I thought she was. Um, definitely David Tennant. Um, because well, no, I watched through Matt Smith. I fell off after Matt Smith. Um, for reasons I'm sure everyone can guess. Stephen Moffat. Um, yeah, where is Liz? She would know. She would answer all of my Doctor Who questions. Um, anyway, so let's talk about the city center, the temps, the stocks, the village green a little bit. So the temps are, um, so how, okay, so I have to think about mechanically how one wakes up in the city. Do you wake up, like, in a specific building, maybe, that you're, like, told to leave because um, someone else is going to wake up, like Captain America did in uh, at the end of the first Avenger when he wakes up in the present day? and then is swarmed by S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Came out of nowhere. Where'd you come from, Nick Fury? Um, and they made the stupid mistake of playing a baseball game from when he was alive. Play a baseball game from, like, a year later. The Phillies are in that baseball game, though. Go Phils. Um, I think. Or the Athletics? I can't remember. I think it was a Philadelphia team. I could be wrong. Okay. So, okay. Uh, old. Um, you wake up in a grimy but nondescript building. Uh, signs point to you downstairs and into a waiting room where a city official uh, officially immigrates isn't the right word in, in officially enters you into the city uh, and tells you to find a job 
and um, uh, but I, I very much picture it as uh, how to yeah like it, it I don't want to say it's like it but kind of Alice Island it's you know it's they give you the most basic of deals and they're you know a centaur or whatever I like centaurs uh, they're like a tiefling and it's just like well, you never seen a devil person before I guess you haven't Here's the deal. You're in suburbia now. Deal with it. Go get a job. Go find a place to live. You can't live here. I don't care where you go, but you can't stay here. Um, so it, it's also a lot like Keldon, the way I ran that, where you come downstairs and, oh, you don't have a job, do you? I'll summon a judge. That I will. I did have... Um, Uh, we have to fill out a quill, fill out a questionnaire. Sorry, this took a long time for me before I got into... Well, I guess it's all new content to you. It's just not new to me. I'm not really doing a lot of writing. I'm doing a lot of reading. Um, yeah, fantasy. Fantasy Alice Island. It's not a script one where I guess it is. Okay. Oh, you know what? I had you know, one day Soup and I I talked to I talked to Soup about this very briefly before and one day we figured out what all the dragons would run let me see if I can find that oh crap nothing everything's fine Let's see, sub. I closed the chat for a minute though. Um, I think it's in this document. Let's see. Okay. No, and I want a header. Stocks. Oh yeah, I had some weird. <laughs> I had some weird original rules for this game. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I just originally wrote down, like, very, very basic notes. Sorry, they're on my laptop screen, not um, up here. But, yeah, the idea that trolls try to bum cigarettes, uh, walking under the ocean floor, you can see shipwrecks sticking out of the ceiling above. Uh, I, I sort of transitioned that into the ceiling. Surface dwellers are called rubes. Lots of warforged fax machines abandoned psychic psych, psychiatric hospitals psychic hospitals abandoned psionic hospitals stuff in this document I forgot about. Okay. That's 
Twitch loading again. Twitch is not loading again. Let me let me pull it up on my phone. Sorry, if anyone had said a ch something in chat in the last, like, five minutes, I haven't seen it. Um, oh, I have a bunch of names in here. Okay, so this is good. Okay, let's see. Dragons. The Apex Predator. Bureaucrats. Yeah, well, I'm about to. I'm about to. I found what you said about dragons. Uh, well, we worked this out together. I don't think it was um, one way or the other. Uh, let's see. I don't know why Twitch is not working on my laptop. But okay, so for red, we decided they were. Uh, all right, let me hold on. Let me. Red are tax collectors. Wait, I feel like we had a hard time with white because they're kind of. I'm gonna come back to that because I don't like what I wrote down. Uh, oops. Sewers and sanitation. Power and other public utilities. And then, I think this is the one you came up with, Steve. Uh, uh, that green dragons are lobbyists. Um, so for, for white dragons, I have, they, they would do public works and they would be labor organizers. I don't know why I wrote that. Does not really fit the idea, but maybe, maybe white dragons wouldn't even be important enough to, to be the top. I, I like white dragons cause they're so dumb. Um, I don't know. <laughs> they could be... Um, which dragons... Burrow? Oh, which ones do burrow? Um, oh, let me get my monster manual. All right, yeah, there you are. Let's open up the dragons. Release the dragons. Okay, let's see. Here we go. Uh, black dragons have a fly and a swim speed. Blue dragons have a fly, burrow, and regular speed. So that, that answers your question, Daniel. They're blue. 
uh, green dragons can walk, fly, and swim. Red dragons can walk, climb, and fly. Oh, I, I've used their climb speed before. It's weird. And white dragons can... Okay, white dragons can also burrow. White dragons have the most movement options. They can walk, burrow, fly, or swim. Uh, white dragons could be the city guard. That might work. And then... Daniel's saying blue dragons could be builders. Let's see. Yeah, pa the reason why they their power is because they breathe lightning. That that's literally my my only thought on them for power. Let's see. What are what are, what are blue dragons like though? Blue dragons are vain and deadly. They're desert predators, and they have many over, they have many minions, and they hoard gems. Green dragons are manipulative, manipulative schemers, which is why I made them lobbyists. Uh, conflict and corruption, I felt like that fit. Uh, tax collectors for red dragons because they're so greedy. Obsessive collectors. And then what are, what are black dragons like? Black dragons are brutal and cruel. I think I picked them because they breathe acid. That's why they do sewer, sewage and sanitation. Uh, so yeah, the idea also being that they're not necessarily, they're, they're government officials. They're doing their job. So they're not necessarily totally evil and manipulative or whatever. They're just kind of, I just kind of think it's funny that a, yeah, dragon would be a bureaucrat just like sitting in an office with like a weird big suit and just kind of, yes. It, it was just a very funny mental picture to me. Let's see what everyone's saying. <laughs> Soup is saying that white dragons are cops. That may... Yeah, that may... Science fiction's never political. Um, Let's see. I do think... Oh... Well, there is the the established joke from Daniel that Comcast and Axe is a white dragon because it always makes your internet freeze. So they could be telecom providers. <laughs> I kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, they're telecom providers. Uh, that's 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 great. Yeah, also I I don't <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that works. It's just like well, it seems to be working on our end. Well, it's not working here. So can you just fix it? I sorry to say I can't. Who put you in charge of this? We have a monopoly. Why? How? Okay, let's see. I'm gonna do. What are, what are black dragons do again? I just I literally just read it. I could also incorporate start incorporating um, chromatic dragons as well. Might be a good thing. If anybody has any any ideas on chromatic dragons. Drop them in chat. Not shadow. What are black dragons? I don't know. It's just about dragons in general. Brutal and cruel. Foes and servants. I do think that... Do you think that? Hmm. Let's see. I do mean metallic. Thank you, Daniel. These are chromatic. I meant metallic. Yes. Okay. So let me okay, let me clear off. I think these two are the best so far. Oh uh, no! And okay. Let me. And 
construction and possibly city guard. Although I do think the city guards maybe not. Well, it might be run by a dragon. Like the chief of police is a dragon, but then like maybe dragonborn are the predominantly a dragonborn police force. Let's see. What's chat saying? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. No, that's it. Daniel's talking about a... Um, Uh, essentially dragons as bankers because they can track treasure and stuff like that. Yeah, I think I think in old editions like red dragons could detect like every piece of gold in their lair. Like down to down to single pieces of copper kind of thing. So maybe I think red dragons would be more akin to bankers and like gold dragons. Is there gold? Okay, let's, hold on. Let me read about metallic dragons real fast. Let's see. Brass dragons are boldly talkative and they covet magic items. Okay. Brass dragons. Brass dragons. Bronze dragons are dr dragons of the coast. War machines. Well organized wealth. What? What does that mean? Bronze dragons loot sunken ships and also collect colorful coral and pearls. Okay. They like shiny things. What's their intelligence? Mediocre. All right. Pretty good. I love, love to watch... What? One of these weirdos. <laughs> they love to watch ships? They're like the that train guy from the... Um, I don't know if you... I showed Chris in that video. If you've never seen that it, it, Like, hyper-enthusiastic train guy. It's just... And it's just a guy getting excited about trains. It's kind of wholesome. Let's see. Copper dragons are jokesters. I remember that. Let's see. Gold dragons eat wealth. Helpful. Master hoarders. So they might be good tax collectors. What are silver dragons? Dragons of virtue that believe in living a moral life involving good... Really? Okay. A respect for humanity. Okay. So the dragon... Dragon turtle. Okay, so let's see. We got... We got... Brass. Bronze. Bronze, copper, gold, and silver. Copper, gold, silver. Now, if we wanted to get really punny, copper could be the police. Gold dragon, well, gold dragons might be good judges, but it, but silver dragons might be good uh, drag uh, judges because they're the ones that are kind of like the weirdly the most lawful. Yeah, <laughs> Daniel, um, they're not copper or brass for. Okay, I kind of think silver should be judges. Okay, let's see. Since they, it says they like, like, small folk the most. I, I don't want this to be a dystopia. Totally, dragons of virtue, they're lawful good, whereas 
Oh, dra gold dragons are also lawful good. Yeah, but they're, they're just kind of weird. I mean, ideally, lawful neutral for the judge, I guess. I mean, I would prefer my judges to be lawful good, but uh, there aren't official rules for gem dragons, which are the neutral dragons in 5e. Or, well, they're the neutral dragons in Dungeon the Dragons. There aren't rules for them in 5e. I think there are in the DMs Guild, though. Yeah, gold... Okay, so gold dragons might be hard. Let's see. So, let's see. Brat, what did... Copper are good hosts and cautious and crafty. That's not a great... They're also weird looking. I forgot how weird looking metallic dragons are. Wait, is there not a picture of a copper dragon? Oh, no. Oh, no, gold dragons are the weird looking ones. They got like a bunch of... They look like um, catfish. Um. Yeah, yeah, gold dragons are like, well, we fight evil dragons, and that's it. Bunch of idiots. Who would worship a dra an evil dragon? Yeah, they're like the servants of Bahabut, the platinum dragon. Okay, let's see. So copper dragons are tricksters. Not quite great for cops. Bronze dragons actively oppose tyranny. And brass dragons are boldly talkative. And they have prized treasures. So I do think brass dragons... I think this is what Daniel said he used. Brass dragons as... Bankers. I think that makes sense. Bronze dragons are public defenders? Daniel's saying? Let's see. Actively oppose tyranny. Yeah, they're, they're... What's the joke from Arrested Development? They're, like, sailing lawyers or whatever. Okay, so I think we're going to do bankers here. Just what Daniel suggested. Bronze... Public... Or, or oh, I forgot that me metallic dragons all have weird breath weapons too. They have like an elemental breath and then I put you to sleep breath I charm you breath I repulse you breath okay okay let's see oh and then the other thing is we, we also power and public utilities sewers and sanitation construction city guard um Now I could make I could make bronze literally law and order. They could be both the police and public defenders. It feels a little bad to not have that copper pun at the same time. They they're they're tricksters. Like that doesn't really work for police officers. I guess. And then, and then, if you wanted to even do a little, slightly, a good dystopia, you could uh, say gold dragons are cops, just because if they do think they're better than you. But yeah, they have to be something that they kind of. Gold dragons for their time, but they are most aloof and grim of the good aligned dragons. They value their privacy to the extent that they rarely fraternize with other dragons. Except their mates and offspring. Um, and then old, older gold dragons will 
shapeshift into people and uh, perhaps kind of rub elbows. And they're master hoarders. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah, kind of kind of would maybe gold that doesn't do anything. They're just kind of they're rare. They're so rare and powerful that they're just kind of they don't have like a, a like a wing of government that they run. Or nobody knows what they do. Slash I decide later. Let's see. Yeah. Let me okay. We also have to figure out what to do with black and blue, but I do like the idea that one of these is construction. And then public utilities would could include sewers and sanitation, so that may not be necessary to break them up. And that might be good for black dragons. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying about making brass the cops because they're kind of talkative, but yeah, it's like a very like kind of old school interpretation of like beat cops, which I don't hate. It's just, I do think they fit well as bankers. I don't, I don't know what to do with copper dragons. <laughs> we, I had a copper dragon in a... Um, game once and he was a bro a bro -y idiot copper dragon appreciates wit a good joke humor story or a riddle copper dragon becomes annoyed with any creature that doesn't laugh at its jokes or accept its tricks with good humor they like bards um they are cautious and crafty when building its hoard a copper dragon prefers treasures from earth uh it's wary when it comes off to showing off its possessions. It knows, so. So if they're good hosts, and this might work well for brass too, they could be like, not not the telecom provider, but like the public broadcasting system, the public draconic, the draconic broadcasting system. P yeah, PBS or um, NPR. Sort of a more erudite wit about them. Ew. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do see what you're saying, in Soup. It's just, it just, it doesn't quite feel. Oh, well, hold on, it says. Ah, oh, well, I, the other thing, the... Here's the, this sort of solidifies that I think I want bronze to be law and order, police and public defenders. Um, under silver dragon, it says, uh, gold and bronze dragons seek to root out evil. So I feel like that is enough of it, just kind of a push in that direction. So 
I think that's bronze. So does then, yeah, does it make sense? Okay. They don't, okay, so that, so they don't, so silver dragons don't seek out evil, but they, but they gladly oppose creatures that dare to commit evil or acts or harm the innocent. Hmm. And they respect humans, and the dragons of virtue. Been showing that ones. So does that would that make them better public defenders and then gold dragons judges, which have kind of gone the long way around to get to. Because, I mean, if I've learned anything from the Law and Order intro, it's they're separate but equal ju parts of the justice system. Is that separate? Like, they're definitely separate. I don't remember if it's a separate but equal. That would be a weird phrase, maybe. Copper. BBS. Reopened up my laptop and on my stupid. Oh, it, it wasn't even connected. Okay, let me think. Okay. What are blue again? They're like desert predators. I know that. Chad, Marty's not in chat, but I know he hates that. <laughs> Fain and Deadly, Orders of Gems. Overlords and Minions. And the Black. Brutal and Cruel. I think, weirdly, In my head, uh, in my head, they they want to build buildings that you know last throughout the eternities. So the idea that they kind of have a claw in the construction that sort of you know from the most sinister point of view, it's it is hubris that you would want to build. Something that lasts. I'm not saying that architects are evil, obviously, but sort of from this point of view, from their point of view, that that's what it's it's vanity that drives them to be um, sort of uh, building lasting edifices, kind of thing. And then just that public utilities are brutal and cruel. I don't know. It's that they they have lots of servants and look. I don't know. These are these are obviously sort of harsh takes on some of these ideas 
And also, I'm not saying that all of these dragons are evil or good. I think it's just tr I'm trying to kind of position them. And it's not necessarily that they're only players in the game. You know, I've mentioned that dwarves build things. Yeah, maybe Dra Daniel's saying maybe dragons just do whatever and try to bend people to their will like local warlords. That's kind of, yeah, I'm kind of, they aren't necessary. I, here, I have said they're bureaucrats, but I am now picturing, especially the red, or the the chromatic dragons, as, as more like crime lords. So, like, the idea of, you know, sort of in sanitation, in construction, like... Yeah, the idea that um, yeah, that, that that certainly the more these the chromatic dragons are a lot more less straight up government and more like industry leaders and possibly with like ties to essentially organized crime. The red being tax collectors might be the most legitimate of them but telecom providers yeah now they're telecom providers they're not it's not a, a, a government service um so let's not say public utilities let's just say utilities construction lobbyists so the 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 chromatic dragons are obviously a lot more sinister takes on this stuff uh and then the chromatic dragon metallic dragons metallic dragons are the more honorable side of this coin as it were they're still bureaucrats but they're less they're more yeah they're more ideally actually helpful So, that's good for now. I'm going to go that way. Okay, so that's that for now. Let's see. I'll just dive right in here, and then I'm probably going to log off in a second. I've mentioned the mayor is a Modron. Mayor. Oh, at some point I wrote down every, like, mister that a song is about. So, like, Mr. Blue Sky, Mr. Kite, Mr. Mustard, Mr. Jones, Mr. Brightside, Mrs. Robinson, Mr. Roboto, Mr. Tambourine Man, Mr. Postman, Mrs. Brown and her lovely daughter. I don't know. Just, I apparently thought that was very funny. Um, oh, the Postal Service. Who would be the Postal Service? Ooh, Copper Dragon with Messengers. That works, too. I think that's much better than PBS. Thank you, guys. Okay. So, yeah, some NPCs I just wrote names down of. I don't know what they are. Dust Queen. Uh, that's what we call the, my cat. Because no matter where she goes, she always ends up with a bunch of dust on her. Like, she could be in a perfectly clean room. She'll find one area and just come up with all this dust in her whiskers. And we're like, how? We just vacuumed. Um, King of the Fuzz. The thin 
the white nuke. I've always wanted to incorporate that into a game. Centaur Klaus. I don't know why I read that down. Mr. Blue Sky. Oh, and yeah. Ma Lolf. As sort of like, um, I wrote this a while ago, but I just played Red Dead Redemption 2, and Ma Braithwaite was, is very much what I was picturing as Lolf. As, you know, sort of like a, yeah, southern twangy, um, or no, there's, um, oh. It's in a book series called uh, DC Smith by Peter Granger. And it's Ma Budge. And it's a British book series about a detective. And he, one of his informants is a, like, a local crime, like, petty crime boss called, like, Ma Budge. And I do like, I just like the idea of Ma, whatever, as, like, a local crime lord. And for, I was Ma Lolf. It's, now, and all her, um, kin. Uh, so, but, but then, yeah, Ma Braithwaite from Red Dead Redemption, uh, sort of solidified that. I don't know if it would be Lolf, um, but that was the name that kind of stuck out to me, and I did. So I do want some kind of ma crime boss. Crime boss. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I also wrote down some some possible subclasses I guess I thought I would create. Boy, I don't know if I'm gonna <laughs> I don't know if I'd have time for any of these, but some of them I do like the idea of a nightlife bard, cleric of the city, but that's already in the thing. Civilization cleric, but I think the order cleric from Ravnica does that. Uh druid, a sewer druid, vermin friend druid, uh some kind of street fighter, a monk brawler, uh an urban ranger, but that's also kind of the gloom stalker. Same thing with sewer. For rogue, a scammer or a hacker. That would be fun to create kind of mechanics for that. Sorcerer, I have the grid or utilities. I think those would be cool too. And the warlock is big brother. But that's kind of the, the ghost in the machine. Okay. Okay, it's getting late, sorry. Um, so, yeah, I think, okay, hold on. Big brother. Warlock patron. So this is stuff, let me, okay, let's see. Let me change this. Technically, my players can access this, but whatever. Or some of my players can. Uh, stuff to expand okay so this is yeah this is stuff i'm gonna work on i'll keep working on uh if people enjoyed this stream i can do it again and keep working on suburbia like i said i still have all of i still don't have a campaign bible for boot underhill it's just a very unorganized list uh with some ideas you can see some of them are highlighted some of them are crossed out ideas i've uh, thought of and abandoned. Uh, I think, I, boy, I used to know what the color coding meant. Um, oh, I think if they were if they were a color, that was the stuff I liked for them. Uh, so I still have to obviously create Boot Underhill. 
Uh, Bide is mostly done, but I have to work on it still. Shattered Kingdoms are sort of done. Uh, and then this, I still have a lot of stuff to do. So if people enjoy these world-building streams, I will continue to do them. Otherwise, I have um, some solo RPGs I can play and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to come back to this stuff. Oh, and, um, yeah, I'm going to come back to this. Hopefully this was enjoyable and not just me too being too rambly or all over the place. I'm trying. I'm not doing a very good job, but I'm trying to remain focused. Um, let's see. Let me just read. Uh, yeah, Daniel, if you would like to send me your notes, I would, I would certainly not turn down looking at them. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you, if you would like to share, I'd love to read them. Um, because, yeah, I'm going to have to create NPCs, kind of figure out how this stuff works, kind of, as I described, are these, I keep pointing as if you can see what I'm pointing at. Let me use the mouse. Are these more, less um, official government bureaucrats and more crime bossy? And then these are the, uh, you know, the the more official ones. But yeah, if you have something, I'd love to read it. Um, because, yeah, thank, thank you to both CC and Daniel and chat. Uh, it's very helpful to have people contributing ideas and, and stuff to bounce off of because I feel like together we made this a lot better than if I was just poking at it because I would have not thought of some of this stuff. But, um, oh, thank you. He already sent it to me. Um, so yeah, I will keep working on this. I probably won't work on it too much off stream because I do like, I do like it being presented to all of you in the open. Um, this was almost two hours. Anyway, I do hope this was somewhat enjoyable. Um, I got a lot done. That's all I care about. Uh, no, I want it to be enjoyable, and I got a lot done. Um, I'm Andy Hatton. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Hatton or at Laugh I N N Dragon. Uh, follow us there for your fun, wholesome D and D content like this, and also like Star Chasers, which returns on Wednesday for an episode about Hero Space, which is a very weird place, and Spell Jammer is a lot of fun. Uh, next week, I don't want to know what will be on Monday, and uh, as obliquely mentioned, uh, Daniel might be out of commission, so we're going to have to see how Task Force Unlikely rolls out, but um, I hope he is. I hope you were feeling better, Daniel, because you were in chat. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Have a great night, everybody. <laughs>